Today's episode is sponsored by Game Toppers. Game Topper is an accessory that will turn any regular table into a luxury gaming table. To find out more, check out their website, GameToppersLLC.com. Plus, keep an eye out for a brand new Kickstarter coming soon. Hey, y'all. It's time for another episode of Rolling Dice and Taking Names. Today, the guys kick off their new pod pledge campaign, review Res Arcana, and reminisce about Saturday morning cartoons and two new games inspired by them, Challenge of the Super Friends and Wacky Races. Also, Adam and I join Marty for a review of the new Space Base expansion. Now let's roll some dice. Welcome back to Rolling Dice and Taking Names. This is episode number 170. That's 170. Kryptonite. This is your movie draft winner, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> and and this is I will concede the movie draft Marty and we are excited to be back to what we do best or what we do talk background about board, noise. yeah background noise talk about board games dude that's what that's what we're here we're past the movie draft oh so much fun as always love that show with them and then Dan invited us over to his show. Yes, he did, where we got to have a draft of our own for a rock band. I stunk. I stunk at that one. Where each of us drafted a uh, one of a four-piece band, a vocalist, guitarist, a drummer, bass player, and, and a wild card. And then Dan has now put that out on his forums for people to vote on uh, which they like the best. And right now, I'm running away with that. Yes, you are. I've got two. And thank goodness I voted for myself. But let's talk about our movie draft a second. So this is the first week after the release of Endgame. And uh, yeah, Tony, unless somehow your other movies just don't even come out to the theater, you've got this. This movie has made $350 million in its opening weekend in the U.S. I mean, that's what... I hope my number one draft pick gets over the entire course of the movie. And you got it in one weekend. I told you guys, let me take this movie and y'all have the field. In other words, I only had one pick and y'all say, no, 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 no. And I'm fine with that. Actually off to the side, we said, Tony's never won. So we got to give him this one. There's no way he can screw this one up. That's so right. There you go. I appreciate y'all giving me that. Now I did something interesting uh, on, now I've yet to see Endgame. I haven't gone and seen it. Mm -hmm. So, and you've seen it twice. I have. I don't know how you gave up four hours or eight hours total for that, but you are the man. Six hours total. Thank you. Well, I count previews. But there's only three previews in, in, in our theater. So it wasn't that. Did long. they do the Godzilla preview? Of course. Oh. There was the Godzilla, the Star Wars and Detective Pikachu. Okay. Still some major movies to come that can help y'all get to the end game. But one of the things I heard about this movie and they're comparing it to so when et came out many 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 moons ago it mm -hmm. stayed in the theater in the top 10 for 11 months wow and they're saying movies nowadays and they talked about the previous avengers infinity gauntlet they talked about did i do that it was it called infinity gauntlet infinity war infinity war that too they said that it didn't stay in the theaters as long because of the fact that there is such mass cinemas they, they they inundate the cinemas unlike back in the day for et <laughs> wait, wait wait a minute there's such mass cinemas you know those words those words don't make any sense they, i'm sorry they they release them in so many theaters now they just they do it um they inundate the market you want, try, you want to try it again you want to start over no again? they inundate the market <laughs> pay attention they inundate the market with what with the movies nowadays what movies okay well, follow along, pay along. Okay. okay play along. I am totally lost. Are you saying they release the same movie in a lot of different theaters or what? So when they release Endgame, yes, they basically said, we are going to release in this theater for all the theaters here, for all the screens here, they are going to just boom, do a huge buttload of them. But back when ET was released, they didn't do that. They picked like a theater. I know times have changed, but okay. But they're saying they don't movies don't get the legs that previous movies like Titanic and ET and you know movies in the past. So the staying power isn't as much. Therefore, overall, like Gone with the Wind, you don't gain as much money from it. Got you. Now it is actually interesting that you bring that up because I read an article the other day uh, that said 
that right now this is on pace to be the highest grossing movie of all time, beating Avatar. And they said because of the decline of the theater, that theaters are shutting down, there's going to, that number of screens are starting to drop, that if this makes it number one, there probably will never be another movie of this scale to come out and beat it because there'll just be the fewer number of theaters available to go to. So this could be the number one, seriously, movie of all time forever and ever. And I can understand that. You're, I, I can see how that would apply. So they do this huge drop of mo the movie in all the theaters as they can. They run it for as long as they can, which is not like they used to do in the past. There's not as many movies. I can see that. Movie theaters. I mean, for this movie, I could not get a ticket even at 7.30 a.m. on Saturday morning. That just was unreal. Now, isn't it ridiculous that this movie is coming out at times like 7.30 a.m.? I heard in some larger cities that they were showing it 24 hours a day. Somebody ran it. They were saying they were running it for 72 hours in all the theaters. Dang. That's just, that's crazy. Well, I'm not going to spoil anything. We had a good time seeing it twice and everything. If you have not seen it and you're a big Marvel fan, get, get out to the theater and watch it. This is the end of an era uh, with, you know, 11 years, 22 movies, good stuff. And this was an even bigger banner weekend than I don't know if you realize, but I saw where Jamie from the secret cabal gaming podcast <laughs> posted on his Facebook page that he went and saw Endgame and then followed it up with the Game of Thrones. That was on, that's another big thing that's ending too. That was on uh, last night too. So I actually caught up uh, and have been watching this season. So, hey, I can, I'm in on the uh, the hype now. Okay, but I can only, I, don't, I haven't seen Endgame, but you know, the amount of emotions that were in Game of Thrones from the Sunday night, I can, oh, I bet that did tear him up. I can see that. Mm. So anyway, enough. We are about board game. Yeah, because it's like, guys, you spent an entire episode two weeks ago talking about this. Talk about something else. We are about board games and trying to make money to support the ability to make board games. Is this like, no, is that a good segue? No, it's not about making board games. It's about being able to continue this podcast. That's right. This is where we start our listener what is it when they do um, NPR? Is it listener funded? Yeah, listener funded. And we do our drives, uh, our campaign? member, our campaign yeah, drives, yeah. our membership drives. Yeah, there you yeah. go, campaign drive. Yeah. Yeah, you knew it was coming, people. <laughs> Let's face facts. It takes a little money to run this show. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, um, costs money for all the equipment. And Marty keeps breaking recorders. And I keep dropping mics and all this other good stuff. So, and keeping the files hosted on a website and the software to keep that up and running. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. Yeah. It's, so, so there's a, there's there's a lot of cost in, involved in making the show. And we've done this before in the past where we have run a pod pledge campaign just to help offset some of those costs. And we actually have people that just reach out to us. Guys, I like what you do. I'm not sure why I've actually asked, but they've never said why. They said, we like what you do and we just like to support you in some shape or form. So what we do is we create this campaign where people can contribute as much or as little as they want. That's right. If you don't even go to the page, you are contributing as little as you need to. Zero. You don't have to contribute anything and you still get this podcast forced on you whether you want it or not. That's right. Background noise for free. The white noise machine puts you to sleep at night. But if you want to just give us a dollar, mm -hmm. you can. A dollar for 12 months. That's $12 total. Hold on. Wait so they can just give us a dollar or a dollar per month? Mm -hmm. I'm confused. They could. So you've already confused me. Is this mass cinemas? Yes, it is. Could they not just give us a dollar in pod pledge? Yes, they can. They can just say. Yes, they can give us a dollar. That's right. Or they, and that's it. Or they can sign. Because the beauty of pod pledge is you can give a one-time donation mm -hmm. or subscribe for a set amount each month. A recurring donation. You could call it that. <laughs> Since that's what it is. <laughs> Mass cinemas. Okay. All right. So we've set up some various levels. And at this time, since I'm obviously out of sync with everything, I'm going to let Marty talk about those. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So yeah, we just have the entry level where you just, Hey, here's a, as a dollar. Thanks for your time. And we very much appreciate that. We also have a $12 level, which is, uh, you could do one dollar per month or Hey, just 12 bucks. Again, you give one lump sum or recurring, however you want to do it. And if you do that, you become a member of our Slack channel. And Tony, we've come to adore the people on our Slack channel. Yes, we have. They provide a lot of good advice to us. They get inundated with our stupidity as always. 
because I'm over there typing on it as usual. Um, we're sharing game, uh, board game stories. We're sharing uh, events that happen. It's become a, a little small community. It's a it's a taste of um, background noise 24, not 24 by 7, because I'm not on it that much. But usually we are out there typing away as much as we can along with everybody else. We've had a lot of, we've had a lot of helpful hints for people mm -hmm. playing board games. We post files up there like uh, handy dandy flow charts or, Oh, I don't know other things that we've seen. We let everybody know, Hey, that game's on sale. Go out and spend your money. The next level is at $2 a month, uh, or $24. You can now vote on a game that w uh, for us to review each month. It's called the Secret Squirrel Poll. We uh, get uh, a few games in each month, and we want the listener to help us decide, hey, what would you like to hear us talk about? And there will always be the option, hey, guys, how about nothing, and you just take a week off? Yeah, right. That's not going to happen. <laughs> so there's the uh, next pledge level. Now, the next one is actually a physical reward, and uh, we have not made these up yet. We're still working on the design, but it's going to be a pledge pin a little nice enamel pin with our logo on it and you can get one of those for four dollars a month or 48 bucks and we have that design that will be out on our uh pod pledge page and we'll share it in other places now the next one tony is the one we're really excited about yes it this is. one we got samples of well wait a minute hold on hold on before you go there i'm, I'm sitting here thinking about the the uh, you know you do need this pledge pin we need to come up with a slogan like hell hydra and show the pins. We need to come up with an RDTN slogan. Slogan. Uh, yeah, I'm good with that. In fact, people if want to, they can help us design uh, the pledge pin and give us ideas for it. This would be a nice little pin you can put, like when you go to a con and put it on your lantern or put it on your your game bag or whatever. So or trade it away to an unsuspecting victim. Uh, yep, yeah, you could do that too. But you're right. The next one is you and I are very excited about. Yes, and I just want to say that uh, the the pledge pin and this next one uh, came to us from our good friend Bernard Donahue, who uh, helps us design this stuff and come up with some great ideas for things we can do for rewards. And this next one is super exciting, because for six dollars a month or for seventy two bucks, you can have your own RDTN Acorn Squeezy toy. It's actually a stress ball because it doesn't make a noise. No, it's it's yeah. Could you imagine that? Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. I did that once with a game that we had and drove uh, Scott King, who his calendar, uh, twenty twenty calendars just wrapped up on Kickstarter. I hope everybody got in on that. If you didn't, mm -hmm. I'm sure you'll be able to order some basic ones online. But yes, the squeezy ball or the stress yes. ball. This is the way to solve AP at board game night. <laughs> <laughs> it has multiple uses, oh, yeah, Tommy. It does. No, number one, if you're just really frustrated, you can squeeze it. Or if you just don't think that's effective, chunk it at somebody. That's right. It's a missile. It's shaped like an acorn. It's got acorn leaves on it. It's got the little acorn hat on it. And you can sit there and just squeeze it. And the more you squeeze it, people are going to hear the air in it. They know you're getting frustrated. Marty doesn't even need to worry about sitting under the AC or ceiling fan because I was playing with it the other night in front of him and he could just feel the air coming off of it as I was sitting there squeezing that stupid thing. And it's very soft and pliable. So if you plunk somebody in the eye with it, it won't take their eye out. But we're not guaranteeing that. So be careful of your aim. So we're super excited about that. About that. So there's our two physical rewards this year, a pledge pin at 48 bucks and an acorn squeezy toy at 72. Next, we have two similarly priced pledge levels, and these are going to be for, uh, what is that, $8 a month? Yes, $8 a month. <laughs> Shut up to me. Uh, or 96 bucks, and we're going to do an RPG one-shot. Tony, you have said, I will host and run a one-shot RPG online for people who back this pledge and we're finally going to get an RPG to the table. That's right. So for those of you who want to be put to sleep while I'm hosting a GM and Mike, I mean, I'm going to bring full frontal grumpiness to you. <laughs> I was like, where is that going? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to be out there. I'm going to be your GM. And what we'll do and the way this will work is if you're part of that pledge group, $96 level, then what's going to happen is, is when the P now this is limited now, I'm uh, come on now. My time is, is not valuable, but still. This is limited. We're going to hold this to... We said 10. Yes, we said 10, unless the money comes pouring in because they really want my time. But anyway, right. and the, when the first five, we will do it in groups of five because what's going to happen is we will be hosting this through Hangout. Hangout, Skype, whatever we think we can get up and running the easiest. And now you don't think you get to pick your one shot. Mm -mm. This is on <clears> me. <throat> 
I get to pick this. You might, you might be down the Lord of the Rings rabbit hole, or who knows, there might be a Star Trek one over there. My Little Pony. My, ooh, you could. Mm -hmm. As Rob Rouse yeah. from Blue Pay Pink says, Glitter Hips could be one of the characters. That's right. We don't know. So that's right. That's the $96 level. You get to come in. Now, if we get too many, Marty might even jump in and host one. Of course I would. I'm, well, I'm going to be playing regardless. Oh, that's right. You are. Crap. Yes, I will be playing regardless. And so uh, that's uh, $96. We're going to limit that to the first 10. We're going to gauge interest in that. If we get a lot of people interested, we may open it up you know, for some more. Uh, the next one, though, is uh, also $96. And it is for our annual strike tournament entry. For $96, bucks, you get a pass that's covered. Uh, come to our strike tournament event this August at Gen Con. Uh, we're going to have tickets going for sale on that soon, but you could jump in right now and guarantee yourself a ticket. This one is also limited to the first 10. So yes, you do have to make it to Gen Con. We will not cover your cost to get there or your badge to get in, but once you're there, you can come and enjoy it. And this is actually a really good deal, Tony, because the tickets that we're going to charge this year are going to be around $20 for a ticket. So this this covers a $20 cost. So if you planned on going, this might be the level that you're looking for. Now, let's we could clarify this a little bit. Now, this is on Thursday night. And if everything holds true, it's at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. You don't need a Gen Con badge. You just have to be in Indianapolis. That's true. It's going to be the uh, old spaghetti factory, mm -hmm. just like it was last year. They're graciously going to have us back again. They did a great job last year, so we can't wait to go back. And of course, we're working on some nice swag. We've already been talking to Miniature Market. They provided those great bags last year, and we're coming up with great ideas to give away uh, this year for every attendee. Now, if you by chance happen to be at Gen Con or in the Indiana Annapolis, Indianapolis area. Mass Cinemas. Mass Cinemas on 8 1. And you'd still like to do an RPG one shot. Marty, can we take care of that person? Dude, that's something we talk about off air. I don't know. Gen Con is a madhouse, man. No, I'm talking about can they get, if I want to pledge at the RPG level. But I also want to go get a Gen Con. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You are just not thought, listening to me tonight. I am not mass cinemas. I thought we were talking about if do the one shot at Gen Con. No. Yes, Tony, if like I want to do the RPG one shot and I want to do the strike tournament, how can I do both? Because I ain't giving you guys $96 times two, which is what? 192. 192. 192. Yeah. Okay. 192. What we do is we have a $120 level or $10 per month. So for $120, you get both. You get the RPG one shot and a past special guest to our strike tournament at Gen Con. That's right. Now, I will say one thing about the Gen Con and that one. They will be coming down early. You know, we can't let them run because if you, I mean, if you want to pledge in September at this level, Gen Con's already passed. Yeah, it is. And, and here's the thing is the nice thing about pod pledge, we can change our levels, right? Mm -hmm. So we may have different uh, rewards coming out at that time. But this first reward is getting to go to the strike tournament. We'll probably have to close that down and probably in June uh, or so. Uh, so if you want to get on that, get in that soon, because it's also gonna be limited to 10 because we got to turn in the numbers uh, to old spaghetti factory, but we'll replace that with something else. The one shot may stay there and we may replace that level with something else or some other goodies. Again, that's what's great about this. We can just kind of throw things and um, and modify it over time. Yes, you're absolutely right. Who knows what can show up later, what special things we can work out or not work out. Who knows what we can do? <laughs> so anyway, there it is. There's our brand new the campaign that's now going to be live. And by the way, if you already support us on the current campaign and you're giving recurring amounts, guess what? When the new one comes up, you're automatically rolled over and you begin accumulating in that one. And we know that there's right now, there's people in our Slack channel that gave from the previous one. We're not going to kick you out. There's going to be a grace period. So we're going to keep everybody in the Slack channel that we have. And after a certain amount of time for the grace period, uh, uh, if people have not met those levels, then we'll start trimming out. I hate to say fat, but you know, that's what the term is, right? Uh, and, and then as new people come on and meet the new level, and it is cheaper this year, Tony, it's only $12 to get into the Slack channel. We'll be adding those people in. You know, we could just delete the channel, make it quick and easy. Cut, you know, rip the Band-Aid off. Why? Why? Why is it? Why? See, why are you so cruel? I'm not cruel. I'm just thinking about what's easiest for me. So Tony, do you remember the the URL for this site, how to get there to pledge? Yes, it's podpledge.com or podge, P 
pledge.com. And you can go out there and we'll have a page out there. We'll also have a link on our website at all time where you can just go out there and click on the pod pledge link. Thank you so much for all those that have supported us in our past campaign. Thank you for anything that you can do to help us out. Again, we're very transparent. The money that we make does not go in our pockets. We do not use it for taking the kids out. Tony did not use it for going to buy a switch. All the funds that we get goes directly back into the show to cover any costs that we have, maybe uh, with any convention costs that we have, or definitely equipment and and server costs and storage costs. That's where most of it goes. Yeah, most of it goes to the, definitely to the server costs. Because uh, a couple of years ago, we had to upgrade to a much better server to handle the bandwidth, and it's been it's been running really well. So the gerbils over there keeping it spinning. We got to keep those gerbils fed. That's exactly right. All right, I'm tired of talking about Pod Pledge. Can we move on? Because you know what, this is a boy- Board game pot. This no, hold on. This is a podcast about board games, and we are twenty minutes into this show, and have yet to talk about one game yet. Well, let's talk about one of my favorite games. Oh, we've already talked about Strike. Yes, we did. But another one that has hit the table probably more times in twenty nineteen than probably a lot of them, and that is Railroad Tycoon. Actually, it's not Railroad Tycoon. Somebody typed that. N- name wrong on my show notes. It's Raccoon Tycoon. That was me. My fault. So Glenn Drover, Forbidden Games, is coming out with a new expansion to Raccoon Tycoon. Mm. Mm. And we loved, loved that game. No matter who we've taught that game, Tony, in our, in our group, people have loved it. People have gone out and bought their own copy. It is a nice entry level to mid type stock game. But Tony, the expansion ramps it up a little bit, baby. It ramps it up. Now, it does add a six player, and Marty and I are going to be the first to tell you that's a lot of players. That's <laughs> <laughs> just like five we thought was a lot of players, but it does give you a six player option. And, and that's fine. If I mean, if you've got somebody, I think that, or a group that really knows this game and can move through the bidding portion of it, six is great. I appreciate them mm-hmm. doing that, taking care. Because a lot of times you're right. You do have one more than you, you know, you, you got six people there. You got three couples. See, that's how that math works. So anyway, he, they're putting in new building tiles. They're correcting mm-hmm. some of the older building tiles. Oh, Marty, guess what happened? What? Unfortunately, one of my uh, glasses was sweating on a table, and we were playing Raccoon Tycoon. Was it one of our RDTN mason jars that people can still get on Pod Pledge? No. Oh, okay. No, it was not. No, um, that's because uh, they wanted a plastic cup. Anyway, they put their tile down, and they go, huh, this tile looks different. It's gotten colored. Uh-oh. Oh, and so does this one. So some cardboard got a little damp, but that's okay. That's all right. Is it? It's actually not okay. Well, contacted Forbidden Games, and they yeah. said that, hey, tell me what, tell me what happened, and um, we'll we'll be able to um, possibly get you some replacement parts. So I'm I'm excited about that. Great customer service from those guys over there. But I will say the money also got wet, but that money is not paper. <laughs> it, mm-hmm. it didn't take a single lick of damage. It was awesome. Back to the expansion. So we've got mm-hmm. six players. What's it called? Uh, Raccoon Tycoon. What's the expansion called? Fat Cat Expansion. Thank you. And it starts on May 14th on Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. We're adding a bunch of tiles. We've got some new town tiles. We've got a new wild card that's coming out that will enhance the railroads. That will allow you to, if you, oh, I did not get that raccoon I needed. I've now got the chance at a wild card railroad that fits in with your set collection that you're doing. But most importantly, which Marty, I think for me and you is kind of neat, is that you're adding this new concept of using your goods, your resources for something else. You're buying special Meeple. Yeah. So everybody's going to get a player board now, a slotted player board that you can use to hold your building tiles, your commodity tokens, but also these new types of resources that you could buy called animal and tycoon uh, meeples. And when you buy those, they're worth victory points at the end of the game. So typically, Tony, when you have goods, you usually use those goods to turn them in to get money. But now like for animal meeples, instead of turning them in for money, you can pay two wheat to get an animal meeple and you're going to cover up a spot on your uh, board and the more spots you cover up with those with those animal meeples the more victory points you're going to get at the end of the game tycoon meeples work the same way except they cost three luxury goods but then there's two other ones tony housing and locomotive meeples too that's right and now 
those like locomotives, they cost one iron and one coal and the locomotive meeples may be placed on a pair player's railroad card, or they can sell it back to the bank for $20, a quick way to get money. Mm -hmm. All right. So you, so you're not having to manipulate the board. You're like, okay, I just need this $20. You can sell it back and you got that. Another way to infuse the economy of the bidding or the maple is then placed on one of the face up railroad cards on the board and it's available for auction. Oh baby. Now here's the part I didn't understand is, is the meeple available for auction or is the card plus the meeple available for auction? card plus the meeple boom that escalates that oh, railroad. oh that makes that super valuable because if you have one of those meeples at the end of the game it's worth three victory points that's right and then from the housing meeples you put it on a city tile a construction tile so same same type of concept all i know for me marty is that I need to go back out to miniaturemarket.com and order some more Zen bins for all these meeple. So this get this new stuff really ramps up the game. Now resources can be purchased. Uh, you could use the resources to purchase different things that are worth victory points. So now there's other ways to cr generate victory points as opposed just to the railroads and the buildings. So I know this sounds like a commercial, but this is one of our favorite games that we got to play at Gen Con last year. So excited to get it in this year. So very excited for the expansion just because it fixes some of the bank rail baron governor's mansion tiles. It adds new tiles. It gives you a different use for your resources other than just collecting money. All of that I think will add to the strategy game. I'm really looking forward to getting this expansion. Once again, May 14th, people, if you don't have um, Raccoon Tycoon, I need you to get it because I need you to back the expansion so that I can back the expansion and it gets produced. <laughs> Once again, it's yeah. all about me. Seriously, one, one of our favorite games from last year. I love what these guys at Forbidden Games are doing. I can't wait to see what else they're going to be doing. Tony, there's another game that we want to talk about that is also one of your an expansion for one of your favorite games. Mr. Ignacy from Portal Games was generous enough to send us a copy of Mystery Tales, the new expansion to Robinson Crusoe. Yes, he did. And there was no sunny day at the beach or in the jungle on this game. Mm -mm. There was not. So this has a brand new theme where you're in South America, you're in the Amazon, and I can't tell you anything else because it's story driven and we can't spoil the story for you. Other than you're going out looking for the lost city or the explorer who went looking for the lost city of Z, who actually was he and his son. Great movie, by the way. So be sure to check that out. But you're right. It's a game. We're don't, not going to spoil it other than it brings some of your Robinson Crusoe over. You have new challenges, new, um, a new type of Oh, what was that? Where? Guys, you, wait, number eight, you had new items. Yeah. You had the uh, the boat that was off the coast that you can get and store stuff on and make things from. And uh, you got new types of tiles. The, it's really cool. The campaign is like a book. Uh, it's a book-based campaign. And we really screwed up, Tony, because <laughs> we, ca we kind of played it like the original Robinson Crusoe. Yep. And we, we found out that these scenarios, in our experience, the ones we played were a lot shorter than the original ones. Uh, oh, and we have also found out that poor planning on our part meant we get to replay all of them again. That's right. Yeah, I mean, because the, the first one is like you got like six rounds in order to uh, in order to finish that first scenario. And usually the games take longer now. It's like we didn't ramp up our production quick enough. We didn't explore fast enough. There was they've added enough new elements to where you feel like, oh, OK, this isn't just Robinson Crusoe with a new theme. They've added some new things that kind of make you play it just a little bit differently. Right. People die, people go insane. It's crazy. I will say this. It does have a Cthulhu-ish theme, feel, dark mm -hmm. theme type to it, more so than Robinson does. So if you like that eerie feel, uh, kind of, because there is that, there's that new thing, instead of getting, you can, you take damage, but you also go crazy or insane like you do in Harkham. So there's a new thing that you got to also manage. We, I will give you a hint, people. The stuff in the boat, it's important. <laughs> yeah. After our first game, we learned in subsequent games. Okay. That stuff in the boat was pretty important. All right. Get the stuff from the boat. We need to get that stuff out the boat. There's a reason why it was given to us in the boat. All right. We need to figure that mm -hmm. one out. But the mechanics are very similar. Very similar. Yeah. If you're used to that placing, determining your successes, if two are there. So from that standpoint, you know, you got that, the morale. All that's still in the base game. The events are coming out just like the, um, the original Robinson. So if you know the game, then that's going to flow very easy for you. So now you have just basically 
have a Robinson story game. It's, it's a story driven campaign game mm -hmm. and basically use the base board. But a lot of the other stuff is brand new. The tiles, some of the items, the um, card decks at the, at the bottom, they have some some new ones there. So, But one thing I always liked about that game, Tony, is how you basically walk around. The board resolves for you. Start at step one, an event, step two, collect your resources, step three, et cetera, and go all the way around. So it's very easy to, to follow. Like you said, you've played Robinson before. You'll pick this one up real quick. Except to me, it feels, Tony, this is way more story-driven than what Robinson is. I completely agree with you, Marty. Matter of fact, if you're interested, be sure to go check it out at portalgamesus.com or you can pick up your copy. It's in all stores at miniaturemarket.com. Go check it out. Get your copy. It will breathe life and death back into your Robinson game. <laughs> yes, it will. So have you made it through L.A. crimes yet, Marty? Well, we're actually waiting on my son from college to get home because we want to play it together uh, as a group. All right. And uh, you just heard we are got to redo Robinson, so we've got plenty of time for that. But actually, we don't. <laughs> what we don't because <laughs> Ignacy's <laughs> got Ignacy's got all these the roll and write. We've seen beautiful pictures from that. We've also mm -hmm. seen Empires. But more importantly, there is a pre-order going mm -hmm. on for one of my favorite games. Yeah, baby. Preach it. Preach it. The 51st state. Ooh. And if you pre-order, you get added bonuses. What do you mean? You mean a 51st state expansion? Yes. Sorry. Well, you just said 51st state, man. <sighs> 50, uh, the expansion. He still pays for this. So either way. <laughs> Whether we screw it up or not, the expansion is called Allies. Proceed. What's left to do? Go pre-order it. It's a great price. You can go out and add, inject more stuff into your 51st state. So if you weren't aware of this, go out to portalgamesus.com and place your pre-order for 51st state Allies. Allies, which adds brand, two brand new factions. Five minute initiative begins in three, two, one. One of our favorite designers is Tom Lehman, who has made games like Roll and Race for the Galaxy. And so when Sandcastle Games and Asmodee said, hey, would you be interested in checking out a new engine building game based on cards from Tom Lehman? Well, heck yes, we would. So we got a chance to play uh, Res Arcana, which you may have seen out there in the wild because it's actually become a pretty popular game. This is a deck building game, which probably takes, I don't know, maybe 30 to 45 minutes, depending on other players, when it's two to four players. And the gist of this game is each of you are a mage. And at the beginning of uh, the game, each of you are dealt eight cards or eight artifacts and you're trying to get those artifacts into play for the purpose of collecting resources and converting those resources to other things and eventually trying to work your way towards getting victory points. But Tony, the winner is not the first person with the most victory points. No, it's not. It's the person with 10. And you said a deck building game. Did I say a deck building game? That is incorrect. It is not a deck no, building game. No, it's kind of like se uh, Seven Wonders where you are sitting there and you are collecting resources. Well, Seven Wonders doesn't do that, but that's not the point. <laughs> so it's not a deck building game and it's not like Seven it's Wonders. It's not. Well, it, sort of, kind of, maybe because you've got a tableau of cards out in front of you that allow you to do special powers that help your mage get to that eventry condition of get to 10 points. Fast game to teach, beautiful artwork, easy mm -hmm. to understand. Matter of fact, I don't even know, watch it play, why he put out a video for this one. Yeah, because it was pretty straightforward because at the very beginning of the round, everybody's going to collect any resources that are available on their cards. Some of the cards lie just to collect resources. And there's, we just used the colors, Tony. There was red and black and blue and green and gold. And uh, we just said, all right, just collect what uh, whatever cards tell you to get. And then each of you are going to take a turn. And the easiest one is, hey, I'm going to take a card from my hand, pay its cost, which is in some form of resources, and put it on the table. And then I say, Tony, it's your your turn. All right. And well, on my turn, I'm like, hmm, that's a pretty good move, Marty. But I think I want to claim a monument or place of power. Now, these take a lot of essences. They take a lot of stuff, but they will help you get to the end game faster. They're out in the middle of the table and people will eventually get those later rounds, but they are very special cards and they will 
definitely there are certain special actions along like i had one where if i did exchange death for victory points for every death on here i got victory points these cards are what you're shooting for in the game because they help you win the game every monument costs four gold and the places of power costs essences and both of them usually generate victory points somehow but you know what? What happens if you're short on gold or essences? Well, I could just discard a card from my hand and get one gold or two of any other essences. All right, Tony, it's your turn. All right. Ooh, look at that card that's before me. I see one now that I has a special power on it, and I want to use it. Now, can I use it? Well, yes, that card is straight. It's not turned 90 degrees. Hey, I don't care. It's not tapped. I'll say it out loud. Then I will use the power on that card, and it gives me the ability to maybe exchange certain essences for different essences. It may do something like create a life issue for someone where they have to give away certain tokens. And if they don't have them, then they are penalized in an additional resource. That's the take that part of this game. Marty, your turn. Well, you know what, Tony? I think I'm done with my turn. So I'm just going to pass. And when I pass, there's magic items in the middle of the table. And I can take a magic item that I have existingly, which may give like free resources, etc., and exchange it for one. I draw a card. And then after Tony has passed, we move on to the next round. First player to 10 points wins. That's it, Tony. That's it. This game really adds nothing special. But every time we played, our group loved it because it's such simple concepts and it's streamlined. Just a simple card building game, 30 minutes. It was a hit. I love this game. Oh, I did too. I enjoyed it. Uh, I, it brought back the um, oh, Century Spice Road feeling to me and the moving of, of changing things out and being able to collect to eventually get to another card. I really enjoyed that aspect of the game. And I also like the ability at the end when you pass, some heavy decisions were being made because you had to be able to choose the special powers that you could pick up during your pass action. That's a very key and component. Now, one thing I will say, when we played, we went with the base. Highly recommend, I use Marty's terms, highly recommend that you use the draft variant of the initial start of the game. Yes, because what we do is everybody just uh, dealt eight cards, but you can get kind of messed up on the cards that you're dealt. It's better that everybody gets four drafts pass do another four draft and pass each of your cards again until you have another eight deck. That way you can build a strategy because you may want to attack people and people can say, well, you know, I'm, I can block attacks. I love this concept, Tony, where some of the cards, when you collect resources, they go straight on your card. Those can't be stolen, but at the beginning of your turn, you can claim all those resources. Sometimes you stack resources on card for victory point generations. There is a lot going on, but it's such a simple game. It was a big thumbs up for me, Tony. Oh, definitely a big thumbs up for me. It's not that expensive of a game to pick up. So very simple decision to be made. I picked up Cube from Tom Lehman, which has a similar, but, but very simple, same mechanics in that game. I wish I had waited for this one. I'm not disappointed with Cube, but this one is definitely one I would keep on my shelf. Yeah, and remember people, draft, use the draft. You'll like it better. Five minute initiative is complete. Okay, maybe that's not the sound that the Wacky Racers made when we were growing up watching that cartoon, Marty. It was nowhere close to it. No, it wasn't. But man, what a good cartoon that was. Yes, it was. But you know, that was actually a little bit before our time. I know, but I still remember it. I remember um, Penelope Pitstop. You know what I remember more, though, is the Hanna-Barbera Laugh Olympics. Remember the Life Olympics? Now that you said it, briefly, yes. Where each of the teams, there was like the, the evil team and they compete against each other. Yeah, and you always pulled for Muttley. Because <laughs> you knew bad guy. Because, well, Muttley and Dick Dastardly, you wanted him to win. Aside from that, last year at Gen Con, when we went to the CMON preview party, they mm -hmm. showed us Wacky Racers. Wacky Races. Well, that too. Wacky Races. <laughs> Shh. I have it pulled up right here. I, God, I cannot read tonight. I am having a bad time. Mass cinemas. That's it. Wacky races. And we were like, we got to get some of that because, because it mm -hmm. brought back the nostalgia of the cartoon. Even though it was before our time, we were like, okay, 
they, they didn't go into a lot of explaining. So when you told me that you had it, I was like, okay, this has got to be on the table. Let's play this now. Because we like other racing games. We like Flamme Rouge. Flamme Rouge. And we like... Uh, um, that one too. The Restoration game. Downforce? Downforce. Thank you. Ooh, couldn't think of the name of it. But what was so good about this game, and it takes me back to one of our favorite games that we got to play many, many, many moons ago, and that was Gravwell. Oh, yeah. Because it has that same mechanic of a, a kind of a push pull where you've got somebody coming at you, and oh, that was so good, so good. Gravwell, I, I'm sorry, I'm reminiscing right now, but wacky races. It kind of has to me. It kind of has a feel like the Thunder Road game we wish they'd remake. Oh yeah, Thunder Road. I was thinking about that one too. Yeah, that's a good game. Yeah, wacky races. Each of you is going to take one of your characters and you create a uh, track, a random built track, and each of the pieces of the track is made up of a certain type of terrain. And you're going to have three cards on your turn, and the cards in the deck are basically each types of the terrain that's out there: desert, forest, etc. And on your turn, you're going to play one card to move your race or one space. If you have a card in your hand that matches the space you're currently at, you can move again. If the last card in your hand also happens to match the space that you're at, you can move again. Regardless of how many cards you play, you just always draw up to three cards at the end and then the next person goes. Simple. That is incorrect because Dick Dastardly gets the chance to move at that point. That's right because he is out to cause havoc on the racetrack. And he is trying to catch up and become front leader of the pack because when he gets to move and he gets to be in the lead, it's not like the game ends. He sets a trap for those racers following in behind him. And everybody, everybody's turn, they're going to flip one card off the top of the deck. And whatever terrain it is, Dick Dasterly starts right in the back of the field. Mm -hmm. And he comes down the middle of the track. Everybody else is to the left and right of the track. And he'll just move up to that next terrain track. Eventually, he'll work his way to the front. He'll draw a random trap card and drop it on there. And then he drops back to the back of the pack again. But if whoever lands on that space where the trap is flips it over and it's usually not a good thing. Yeah. It's going to hurt you. It's going to do something. Do you know why he moves to the back? Why? Because he's busy. He was busy setting the trap. Okay. So he's out of his car. His car's not running. Ah, that everybody passes him by. And then, uh, Muttley goes. <laughs> That's right. And so then he has to catch back up because he's got to get everybody in because he's busy watching his his um, trap go off. There's your theme. But well, another thing that's really cool, Tony, is uh, you always use all the racers in the box. So that means regardless of the number of plays you have, you may have NPC racers out there. And on their turn, they're just going to flip over a card and then they're going to uh, have a chance to move. So basically, you're not only competing against the other racers, but all the so the NPCs. But Tony, there's actually a little bit of strategy in this. Because if you see a traps coming up, you may say, you know, I'm not going to move as many spaces as what I think I can this turn and try to force somebody else to go up there and trigger the trap. That's right. Because it's not like everybody can stack up. You have to, you'll jockey for position, fill in some open gaps, whatever. You know, Marty, the way we're talking about this may sound kind of like all I'm doing is flipping cards and moving. This is boring. Where, where's the excitement? The excitement is on the player boards. Every racer has special powers that you can activate to either defeat traps or get caught up or impact other racers. Those are very important. And halfway through the race, you may get to re-energize, revigorate, whatever you want to call it, a power that you've used in the past. So the strategy is key because I thought I had that race won and somebody blew by me and won the race. Yeah, so those uh, that makes a very asymmetric game. So each character has their special powers that they can use. You can use them on your turn whenever you want, but you've only got four. And you can you can reset or reflip one, so you need to think about when you want to use them. Like one of the uh, times that I played, one of the characters would let me switch tiles. Mm. So switching tiles was cool because if I didn't have the right cards in my hand to be able to move, I might be able to switch a tile or two and able to use all my cards. So uh, sometimes you have to look at an advance of what's coming up on the track, what types of terrain and try to get the right, correct combination of cards in your hand to try to move as, as best as you can. It's a very simple game to teach. What, Tony? 30 seconds to teach, maybe a minute, probably 15 minutes to play. This is one of those things great for kids, great for adults, just to uh, get out and play real quick. I, I enjoyed it. I did too. A good little racing game. Now, is it going to replace Flamme Rouge for me? 
Mm, probably not. No, but but it's a different. If you look in weight, what was that? What was that big sigh? <gasps> <sighs> no, I was, well, I was trying to think in weightiness. Mm. Flam Rouge takes a lot longer than what this game oh, yeah, takes yeah. to play, but it's a lot more thinky too. This one is literally set up and play 20 minutes, you're, you're done and can put away. So if you want a quick racing game, this is it. Downforce takes even longer. Mm. So those are more uh, involved racing games. But I think for, for me, this is kind of like that. If you got kids, it's perfect for kids oh, yeah. and teaching a racing game. The only thing that's weird, Tony, is that the theme is really cool, but I wonder how many people are going to be able to relate to it. That's, yeah. I mean, the models will carry the game from that standpoint. If you can't relate, they don't remember about dastardly and mutley and what they were always trying to do in the cartoon. Also, I don't even know if you can see those cartoons anymore. Yeah, I'm not sure. I wish of all the racing type IPs, I, it would have been hard. If this had the Mario Kart IP, mm. oh my gosh. Yeah. That would be huge. Well, like you said, probably be hard and real costly, and this was probably not. It is. <laughs> That's right. The Mario IP is is a lot higher. So, hey, if you're looking for a, a simple racing game that looks really cool, that the models are nice and everything, you can uh, check it out uh, from Simon Games. Uh, that's going to be um, out soon. You can also find it at uh, Miniature Market. But Tony, us playing this this game and the next game we're going to talk about got us talking about some of our favorite cartoons. Now, while this was came out in the 60s, it was also still played um, in the 70s. And you and I grew up on 70s and 80s cartoons. And I don't know if I've ever talked to you about what your favorite cartoons from that era was. I'm pretty sure in our 30 plus years, you haven't. <laughs> Okay. Because, <laughs> I mean, it's something that you don't think about. I mean, you're, you're absolutely, Saturday mornings are different for our kids now than they were for you and I. We had cartoons. They do not have cartoons. I mean, it was the classic ABC, NBC, CBS all had Saturday morning cartoons that started from like eight until noon. And remember the big deal in the fall when the new lineup would oh, come yeah. out? You remember, you remember the Friday night specials yeah. when they would introduce the new cartoons? Oh, yeah. I never missed that. I never did. And when a VCR was introduced in my house, I was able to record. Oh, but see, so good. I, wait, I wonder if the VCR was out when they were doing that still. I don't know, but I just remember that was such a highlight. Saturday, Mark, uh, Saturday morning cartoons uh, was such a highlight. Tony would actually put out a, a poll asking people their top 70s and 80s cartoons. But before we get to that, I just want to talk to you. What's some of your favorite 70s and 80s cartoons? Well, um, I'm going to start from the bottom okay. on my list. My number three, which I always, even though there are many cartoons, if they ever came on, Wiley and the Roadrunner. Looney Tunes, I know it's a collection of them, and I know it's Bugs Bunny and all. Foghorn, Leghorn, all those were great. But my favorite of that cartoon saturday morning cartoon was because you had the bugs bunny road uh B bugs bunny daffy duck hour so of that i could say that one but no i'm going to even narrow it down i like wiley coyote super genius and the roadrunner so here's the thing tony and this is where i painted ourselves into a corner here those really weren't made in the 70s they were made in the 60s weren't they yeah and, and it was so funny when our we did our contest i realized man i ham i hum humstrung that's good that's like the past tense of hamstring i humstrung them. yes you did my cinemas so i sure i probably should have said 80s or before mm -hmm. because looney tunes is right in there with me also uh with my favorite being roadrunner and coyote oh, by far yeah in fact coyote wiley is also my favorite looney tunes character i had a looney tunes i mean a wiley coyote stuffed animal i still have a super genius t-shirt i i just i just love that character so yeah that's definitely one of my favorites sure we break the 60s 70s rule but it, it's in there for me too now the favorite looney tunes cartoon of all time and I know this one's your favorite too, is Duck Season. Oh, as far as the individual yeah. short? Oh, by far. Duck Season. Uh, Rabbit Season, Duck Season oh. is, is, I think, just iconic. And most of the iconic ones for me do have Daffy Duck. Uh, that one, uh, was it uh, Robin Hood? Oh, Robin Hood. <laughs> Yikes! And away! Yikes! And away! Yikes! And away! Oh, 
guy. Or when when um, Bugs Bunny was drawing Daffy Duck's cartoon for him, uh, I'll duck him up. <laughs> All right. Let's get this picture started. No, no. Listen, pal. Let's discuss this thing. Huh? That's Whoa. right. Oh, I'm a fly boy. I'm a fly boy. <laughs> <laughs> Such good card. And then they started cutting the violence out of Wiley Coyote. I know. He wasn't really blown up, people. Okay, so what was your number three? Since you already named it, I'm going to lump that in there with one of my top three. Okay. Looney Tunes is mine in there. Yeah. All right. So, number two, mm -hmm. by far, I've watched a ton of it. And even when I was a kid, it scared me to death. Certain episodes, Scooby Dooby Doo, where are you? Oh, so good. And I'm sure that was 60s too. It was, but there were some 70s versions because there was Scooby-Doo and Scrappy. Scrappy was introduced I, no, in the I, 70s. No, no, I do, no, no? Mm -mm, no, don't bring Scrappy. You want Scrappy-less. I am Scrappy-less. You, you can stop <laughs> right there. Okay, so we'll exclude uh, uh, Scrappy. So guess what? Um, um, Scooby-Doo was one of my uh, top ones also. Did we like the same three? Probably. I mean, I, because you said Saturday morning, Spider-Man, the amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man was never a Saturday morning cartoon, so I didn't include it. But yeah, Scooby. Uh -huh. But yeah, all the Scooby-Doo, when he ran into the diver with the glowing green eyes, and he was running in the barrel. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was just so, it's like, could you not come up with a different ending, though? There's basically, they capture the guy. He's bound in some way. They take off the mask. Mr. Wilson! And I would have gotten away with it, too, if it wasn't for you meddling kids. But that's okay. I was fine with that. I mean, it's just like Three's Company's TV sitcom. That's true. It was the same story over and over. It's just like somebody heard something and misunderstood it, and then hilarity ensued. All right. So number one. If it's, it's going to be the same thing. It is. It's Super Friends. Oh, yeah. Super Friends. So we had the same top three. Super Friends was one I watched religiously yes. every single week. Okay. So let me ask you, were you Wonder Twins or were you Wendy and... Oh, what was the other guy's name? Wasn't Mark? No, it was the original. Yeah. Wonder Twins was the later right. version, but then it was like the two like hippie siblings or friends. Well, he only had one sweatshirt. That's true. <laughs> Wendy and Marvin. Wendy and Marvin. Thank you, thank you. So those were the original, and then they came out with the Wonder Twins. So which one was your favorite? Uh, Wendy and Marvin. Same here. So Wonder Twins was so stupid. He could only take the shape of water stuff. And then she basically had to become like a bird or something so she could carry him in a pail. Yeah. Or their monkey Zeke had to run around. Was it Zeke? And carry the water. Yeah. It's like form of a glacier. Okay. That's, I guess that's really useful. Oh, look out. They're going to slip and fall. I'm not really sure what they were trying to go there. I, yeah. I don't know. And do you, I don't even remember the planet they were from. Oh, I don't, I don't either. But again, I didn't watch it for them. I watched it for the hall of justice and Superman and, you know, Batman, Wonder Woman, the, the lame Aquaman at the time. And then, you know, as time went on, they kept adding these other superheroes mm -hmm. and I was always excited. Ooh, who will be the guest superhero this time? I mean, was it, what was the name of the, uh, the native American that would grow really tall? Was it Apache Geronimo? chief. Apache Chief, thank you. I liked him. I thought he was cool. Yeah. And what about when the Harlem Globetrotters were visited? Oh, wait, that was Scooby-Doo. Mark Lemon and Curly? Yeah, that was Scooby-Doo. That was right. That was Scooby-Doo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the Legion of Doom. Yep. I don't know how many times I pulled for Lex Luthor. Why are you battling the people that are your arch nemesis? Go against the other people. And I think they did in one show. Where they switched it mm -hmm. up a little bit. They may have. I mean, who else was in that? Uh, in there it was Lex Luthor, Solomon Grundy, mm, Solomon um, Grundy, uh, Bizarro. Yeah, Bizarro. Um, Gorilla Grodd, I think, was in yeah. there. Oh, uh, Black Manta was in there. Cheetah. Yeah. Um, and then Apache Chief's nemesis. I forget what her. her it wasn't Gargantua. I forget what her name was. Oh, no, it was Gargantua. It was? Okay. Yeah, I think you're thinking Cheetah, but wasn't it Gargantua because she could grow tall? Yes, that's right. And she had, and she had the leopard print stuff? Because mm -hmm. you're right, to, to battle um, Flash was... Uh, Captain Cold. Captain Cold. And yep. the gorilla was who's... Oh, wasn't Riddler in it? Or who was it for Batman and, Batman and Robin? Scarecrow. Scarecrow. Wow. Well, I, boy, I could just reminisce on this stuff all day. All right. So who's your honorary that wasn't Saturday morning cartoon? Because I've got one. 
Ooh, go ahead with yours because you caught me cold on that one. Okay, so for me, by far, Battle of the Planets. Uh, that was a cartoon that came out from Japan, and I was so into that cartoon on weekday afternoons. Had a, a group of like five people that uh, flew this ship. They were like they were like regular people, but they all had these uh, costumes. I guess it made them look like birds somewhat. They could fly, and uh, but the ship is what I love so much. It was called the Phoenix. Mm. And uh, the phoenix could go into this mode where it turned into a fiery bird. I don't know, man. I loved that cartoon, Battle of the Planets. And I heard at one time that there was like a, a live action movie somewhere that was made in Japan. I, I need to look and see if it was ever made. But but that's my um, that's mine. What about you? So mine is, uh, let's see if I can do it. I don't, God, I'm, I'm going to mess it up. Danger lurking everywhere, but you know, we got to care. Evil men with evil schemes. Something, something, something. In space, Star Blazers. <laughs> is Star Blazers the one with submarines or battleships in space? It was the battleship that had the big cannon. I, I'd say it's not the Yoing Yoing gun because that was Speed Racer. <laughs> oh, I forgot Speed Racer. Yeah. That would have been in one of our top ones too. Uh, but like you for Battle of the Planet, Star Blazers. Are they going yeah. to get home? Are they going to win? Oh, yes. That was the cartoon that I always watched uh, in the afternoon, Star Blazers. Yeah. Danger lurking everywhere. Just go out and Google Star Blazers theme and you'll know the correct way to do it. Not what I do. That's so good. And I can sit here and talk cartoons forever. Well, another reason why we want to talk about this was because... We recently got to check out a new game from Cryptozoic from the designers Ben Pinchback and Matt Riddle, Challenge of the Super Friends. And this is a really straight uh, forward card game. If you've ever played Eggs and Empires, it's pretty much this game, Tony. Each of you is going to be one of the Super Friends from the cartoon, and you have a deck of cards, and all of you have the same number of cards, but a couple of special powers in them. You're going to have objectives put on the board that you can use to collect victory points. Each of you are going to select one of your cards, put it face down in front of you, flip it, Whoever has the highest number gets to claim one of the objectives. Where well, that sounds simple and straightforward, it is. But some of the cards say, you know, I can't take negative victory points or switch with somebody else. So there's text on the cards. You can kind of mess with other people. And the uh, whole goal is to collect the most victory points after playing six rounds. You can count your victory points and, and see who the winner is. Again, very straightforward game. But if you like the, the Eggs and Empires type game, this is one of those that brings back a lot of nostalgia and it's quick to play, quick to learn. It's super friends. Come on. Oh yeah. The, the artwork takes you back. It floods your mind. You're sitting there. I got to play Aquaman and I was trying to talk to the fish in the fish tank nearby. It's a simple game. You're right. It's very fast. I'm trying to find out and you may already know. I don't remember. Let's see if BGG two to four. What would be fun is if we could expand that. Could you imagine six, eight of us doing this and, and, and battling it out like that? If you if you had mm -hmm. the Legion of Doom going up against it, oh, even though the Legion of Doom is part of it, because there were these, uh, was it challenge cards? Yeah, there was challenge cards where you can actually force somebody to draw a challenge card. And those were always bad. They went in front of you and they would do bad things for you uh, during your turn. So there are little things that you can do to, to hit each other. But what's weird is each of you are playing as one of the super friends and you're doing bad things to your allies. It's like, What's going on there? Mm -hmm. And this is based on, what was it? Uh, the Griffin card game engine from Cryptozoic. Did you say that? Yeah, yeah, it is. And I believe it's supposed to be one of those things where they're going to come out with other Griffin style games and maybe you can mix and match and everything. So that's from Cryptozoic. So be uh, keep an eye out for them and, and this game and, and plus others is going to come out in that line because Cryptozoic has a lot of IPs that they could, they could use this with. And, and like I said, if you know Eggs and Empires, but you want something different theme, uh, this is it. All right. So Marty ran a contest. He did this on his own. Didn't make me do a form or anything. He did it on his own, said, all right, everybody send in your favorite. And he did a top 10 list that I have not seen. That's correct. It was sealed away. So I, he didn't send me the link or anything. So I couldn't look at it. So Marty, talk to me. You want to go 10 to one or one oh, to 10? It's always 10 to one, but let's not belabor the point. Let's just, let's go, go. Sure. Here we go. I never saw the cartoon that came in at number 10. Robotech. Heard of, but never saw. Yep. No, see, so I can't say much about it. Number nine, not surprised at all. He-Man. He-Man was a big 80s cartoon. I never went back and watched in high school or in college. Mm -hmm. I know people did, but you know, I just, I didn't get into He-Man very much. That's the thing. The next one that was up, 
I didn't get into either, but I know a lot of people in high school and college that did. DuckTales. Nope. Didn't watch DuckTales either. Scrooge McDuck. Mm -mm. Didn't watch them. What about at number seven? Did you ever watch Thundercats? Only if my roommate was watching it. Okay. All right. Or actually, my sweet mates. Uh, gentlemen, we, June Buff, no, he was my roommate. He didn't watch it, but the Thundercats, they, they did. They planned their schedule around the Thundercats. <laughs> nice. Now the next one, Tony, number six, you and I watched and we watched together Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Heroes in a half shell turtle power. That's right, baby. That's it. That's right, baby. I had a turtle's key ring. I was had some uh action figures that I don't know, I think I got rid of. Yes, full tilt bozo on TMNT, which is almost close to RDTN. And we regret to this day never going out and buying those black and white comics that oh. uh, were big before the, that came out before the cartoon. We would we would have made some money off those because those are still pretty valuable. Which one was your favorite? Oh my gosh. Uh, who was the one that had the size? Raphael. No, I like Raphael. Okay. And I was a Donatello guy. There you go. Was he the uh, pole? Yep. Wow, I'm surprised I actually remember that. All right. Coming in at number five, Thundar the Barbarian. Okay. I can see that. I didn't, once again, miss it. You did not miss number four, Looney Tunes. No. You did not miss number three, Super Friends. No. Oops. There was actually a tie. Tied with Super Friends. I didn't mention it. Transformers. Oh, of course. I'm sorry. That would have been a big one I missed. Transformers was also in there tied for Super See, Friends. By, by doing this 80s thing, I missed a lot of these. Number two, G.I. Joe. Go, Joe! I did enjoy watching Joe. Mm -hmm. I did watch Joe. Okay. So number one would be probably what? I, I got nothing. I have no idea. Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo. Really? Okay. Yep. Scooby-Doo. Yep. Number one, Scooby-Doo. So Scooby-Doo, G.I. Joe, Super Friends, Transformers, Bugs Bunny, Thundar, TMNT, Thundercats, DuckTales, He-Man, and Robotech. And guess what? For all those that entered, you had a chance to win a prize thanks to Cryptozoic and Simon Games. We're going to be giving away one copy of each of those games. And the winners are... For Challenge of the Super Friends by random drawing, Tom Little, and the winner of Wacky Races from Simon, our buddy who's also in our Slack channel, Willie Williams. Woohoo! We'll be reaching out to each of you and uh, the prospective respective companies, Cryptozoic and Simon, will be sending you those games. Thank you much, so much to Simon and Cryptozoic for sponsoring this contest. And every everybody, come out to the guild. Tell us what your favorite cartoons were and some of the memories that you have with them. I want to know where the heck Voltron is. It was in the list. It was in the list. I did have I did have one of the lions. I did get an action figure of the one of the lions. I forget which one. My mom goes, "You're in college. Why do you want this?" I go, "Mom, it's Voltron. Just just put it in my just just do just it. Just give me a Voltron. Just give me a Voltron lion." Still one of the hottest games out on BGG is Gloomhaven, and that game is a beast, and what better way to control that beast than by getting a fantastic organizer, organizer from the Broken Token? They have their infamous Gloomhaven organizer that's out there, but just recently they've announced that they are going to come out with an upgrade to their existing organizer that includes the new expansion, Forgotten Circles. You can either buy the Gloomhaven Organizer with the Forgotten Circles expansion or buy the Forgotten Circles upgrade by itself. It's on pre-order right now. You can go find out more about it and many of their other items over at thebrokentoken.com. Five minute initiative begins in three. Two, one. Last year, one of our favorite dice games dice. was from was Space Base from AEG and designer John D. Claire. And yes, joining me on this five minute initiative is my wife Vanessa. And yes, I love dice. And my son Adam. I also enjoy dice, but to a lesser degree. <laughs> As we just experienced the brand new expansion. I'm gonna have to stop you right there. Oh man, here we go. Because when we first played this game, we played a song 
and you're going to have to put it in here now. You must play Peter Schilling's Major Tom. Vanessa, just for you, we're going to pause the five-minute clock and start just a little snippet of But let me tell you, oh my this expansion made me happy. <laughs> so honestly, we don't even need to say anything. I'm telling everyone what to do right now. Just turn off rolling dice and taking names Whoa. and go and buy this expansion. That's all you need to do. Just listen to me, people. The Emergence of Shy Pluto is the brand new expansion to Space Base. And Space Base is a game where each of you have a tableau in front of you with cards labeled 1 through 12 on your turn. You're going to roll two dice and you can resolve the sum of those two dice of uh, one individual card or two individual cards by each of the individual dice what's so great about this game is you're going to be buying cards that you replace existing cards that go upside down on your tableau those cards are then activated on other players turns so if Vanessa if you were to roll a three and I happen to have a card in that slot that's turned upside down to be activated on your turn I get to activate it on that turn the goal of the game is to collect resources and generate income for the purpose of getting 40 victory points the space base base game is a pretty simple card dice rolling game. Oh, yes, I agree. It is very fun. Now, I don't know what you just said. Here's what I know. <laughs> okay. Here's what I know. When you play the game, mm -hmm. there's a section on the bottom of the card. That's what you look at. Don't worry about what you roll on your roll, people. Look at how to get your card <laughs> turned upside down so that you can benefit from someone else's role. That's the main thing about this one. We should let you know that once again tonight, mom did win again. Yes. So <laughs> she does know the proper way to play this game. Vanessa rules at dice games. Roll for the galaxy, I, space base. No, 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 Craps. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. I just love dice. They know it. They sense it. And so they're nice to me. All right. So let's talk about this game. Typically, when you have expansions, there are some introduced some new cards, some new mechanics. You have a rule book and says, all right, shuffle these into your existing base game and go play the game. This game was not like that in that this game slowly introduced brand new mechanics and new, Macar, new cards over the course of almost like a legacy game. Because when you open the box, you have these stack of cards that says, do not read until you read this rule book. Which is so exciting and it makes me want to read it. And two mystery boxes which contains things that you can't look at, which means unfortunately, we can't talk about all the goodies in this because we would ruin it for people. And we do want y'all to know, I guess it took us about two weeks just with different things that we had to do, but we played the whole thing. But when we played, you start playing just the base game. Yes. And I can't remember, maybe it was about three-fourths of the way in where we were able to open up, or was it right at the end uh, of it, the game? It was right towards the beginning where it says, oh, by the way, here's some new cards, and here's a little new mechanic you might okay. want to use. Well, here's what I remember. We all went, whoa, Nelly, <laughs> what is happening? That's what I'm saying. Just go and buy it. So if you didn't stop it earlier, stop it now and go and buy it. Well, now that all the listeners are gone, I guess... <laughs> But uh, this expansion is one of the most well integrated into a game I've ever seen. Like it, it by the end of it, I mean, maybe it's because it's introduced slowly, mm -hmm. like piece by piece. But by the end of it, this could have been the base game. Like this could have been integrated into the base game from the beginning. And it was just so well implemented the way they do it. And the rules encourage you to play with the new mechanics. Well, dare I say, force you to play with the new yes. mechanics. If you want to fully, you know, take advantage of the game and win, you're going to have to to do the new things that they told you about. And I think that's really cool. Again, typically they just like, all right, we're going to shuffle new cards into the decks. And if you do that, you may never see those cards. The way they uh, set this up is, you must use the new things that came out in order to progress the story. And yes, there's a story in here. It's a light, cute little story. Mm -hmm. But regardless, there's a little story. And when it got to the point when it says, open mystery box number one, we were like so excited and we did. And it threw in a twist we weren't expecting. Then we get to mystery box number two and open it. And another little twist. But the coolest thing is now that we're done, like many legacy games, when the legacy game's over, that's it. You don't get to play anymore. What they've done is it's like, all right, you have all these brand new mechanics. From now on, when you set up the game, set it up A, B, C, and D, and just play the game as normal. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So they introduced all these new mechanics slowly, and now it's just part of the game. Yeah, it was fantastic. I had a lot of fun. And I do have to say that when we started tonight, can't tell you exactly. It, I, I wish we could we can't say, say, so say much. anything. Huh? But at the beginning, I was like, I can't stand this. And I got so mad, and it wasn't liking me. And I was like, I'm never going to play it again. And then, like, literally 10 minutes later, this is the best game ever. <laughs> like, so it is a really good game when it can take you through all the emotions and just have a great time with it. Base game was so very simple. I think if they would have thrown all this new stuff at you, it would have been a little off pudding because there's so much new stuff that might have gotten confusing but it's just teased little by little bit that by the very end you understand everything that was introduced and from now on it's like oh okay it's just part of the part of the regular game it's dice it's dice <laughs> and it's wonderful and we did play so how many games did we play it took us three plays it took us three plays to work through the entire game so i would say average is probably three to four plays to open up everything that's in the expansion mm -hmm. i would think mm -hmm. and adam won last time so it's victory points. It's victory points. That's like Tony says, it's just victory points. It, it's just, it, it, Except just I can look never for okay. how to get the victory. Because you're trying to do too much mumbo jumbo <laughs> over there. I'm going to do this to do this and activate this and activate this for one victory point. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to do some cool stuff. <laughs> I just never could win with it. Sometimes you don't need expansions. I think if you like Space Base, you got to go out right now and get this expansion. Oh, I didn't I say that at the very beginning. <laughs> did do. I, I, Too long, did not I, listen. Go get it. Yeah. 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 Stop by, get a moon pie, RC on the way, and, and pick it up. You know, I, the story is so well implemented. I can't believe they got the Marvel licensing. We flipped that. <laughs> whoa, whoa. We flipped that last card, and Thanos shows up. Man, I was and, not ready. And then what was so weird is he snapped his fingers, <laughs> and half the cards disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, spoiler alert for Infinity War if you haven't seen it. Statue of Limitations over for Infinity War, right? Not in game. Okay. I really wish we could talk about the we can't. I know. comments and everything, but I hope that you can tell through the excitement that it is it's very, well made. very well made. So much fun to play. I wanted to take pictures and yep. I couldn't because I couldn't share. But what is so cool is at the very, very end when it's all said and done, here's the one final thing that you have. You will use this from now on and it totally changes this game to where this went from like a kind of an entry level game to there were some heady heady thoughts that had to be had to take place over the course of this game to decide what's the best way to win because there's a lot more decisions to make at this point point. and did you talk about the um review you did of space Base? oh yes if you want to go hear our original review of space base and here we thought about it it's back on episode 142. again this is space base from aeg designer john d claire you know it won a squirrely award for us last year and right now this expansion automatically gets a nomination for our best expansion for this year's squirrely awards wow absolutely again it's out right now in your local game stores go or get online it. go get it do it let's do it say it adam do it do it <laughs> thanks guys five minute initiative is complete Well, Tony, that is going to be the end of another RDT and F episode. But before we get out of here, I do want to mention this really unique Kickstarter that is out on Kickstarter. Wait a minute, Marty, <laughs> right. I'm not sure I understand. Is there a Kickstarter out on Kickstarter? Not not on My cinemas. Not a, not as Indiegogo going on Kickstarter or <laughs> That's right. This thing's called the Vorpal board the vorpal and uh, i'm just going to read this synopsis from the kickstarter the platform for playing your favorite tabletop games with friends online using the actual game pieces now that sounds really cool so you have like tony you and i maybe can't get together but we want to play a board game so what this device is it's a little an arm that attaches to a a, a box that you can uh, attach your camera to that arm so and use the camera on there in order to be able to share your playing spaces there's an app that goes along with it so that you can see each other using a camera maybe using ipad or something so i could see you i could see the board 
and then we could actually manipulate and play the game. But then there's also this thing too, to where you can take cards, maybe the cards that you would put into play that maybe you're not supposed to see, but the other player can, and you can use the camera to scan the card and show them the card, it scans it. And then on their side, on their app, they can see the card, but you can't. So it kind of fixes that issue. It's like, well, I got a card that I know that you're going to be playing with, but I can't see it. So they kind of fix that, that problem right there. It's an interesting concept, Tony, uh, basically creating these tools to make remote game playing possible. And it makes it easy for you. Let's just cut to the chase there. This Kickstarter, which I think is on Kickstarter, is going to make it easier for you to achieve that. If, if you don't want to crank up, uh, what is it, Tabletopia? What's the online? Tabletopia, yeah, or use Skype or something. I mean, people are probably thinking, wait a minute, why not just use Skype? I think the really unique thing is, is this app is built from the ground it's up the to support multiple windows of showing the game board, showing you, uh, showing a hand of cards, um, et cetera. So there's multiple purposes of the app that uh, kind of breaks it away from just using a typical camera and a Skype. Yeah. I, and I think that's what everybody needs to understand. It's not this accessory. It's the app. It's being able to do that, being able to show the trades, being able to show the various things that are needed. Yes, we already have tabletop. Yeah, but it, it rolls it all together. And even though the thing about scanning the card, taking a picture with your phone, that's kind of a cute little gimmick. I like that little box that they built for that. It is. It looks like a little scanner. You, you lift the lid, you put a card down on it and your camera's underneath it to scan it real quick. So if that sounds like something that you might be interested in we'll put a link in our show notes and it's called the vorpal board and it's by uh vorpal enterprises okay that's not like um don't have enough going on in kickstarter just recovering from that and before we get out of here i've got kind of a sad note to share and i got a bone to pick with you oh well, hey which which would be better the bone first or the sad note go with the sad note just recently the final two decks for ashes rise of the phoenix born has been released to retail. This was a game that came out uh, several years ago from Plat Hat Games and our friend um, Isaac Vega. Uh, it's an LCG type game. It's actually one of my favorite of all time. It is up there with Netrunner. Uh, right there with Netrunner, I would put Ashes as my favorite competitive game. I love the idea of the dice and everything. And I remember that was basically how I formed a really good relationship with Isaac. It was at the introduction at Origins where he was showing the game off and he came over and, and showed us how the, the, the game worked. And I was just enthralled with the idea of using dice as resources, but it didn't feel like it was very luck based. Uh, there was some skill involved. The groundbreaking things of Picking your starting five cards in your hand instead of drawing five off the top. You get to pick which ones you start with. I love the game. It had some great mechanics. It just ran into some issues over the years. They they had a problem getting out su tournament support, which hurt it. And then there was, you know, they were bought by Asmo Day, Plat Hat, and everything. They had to go through all that. So it kind of lost a little steam and it just kind of I guess petered out over the years, but I love all those cards. I love that set. And, and it introduced us to Fernanda Suarez, who's the artist for that game. We loved her art so much that when we redesigned our logo, the first person we went to was Fernanda and she's the one that redesigned our RDTN logo. So ashes holds a special place in my heart for having the chance to develop a relationship with Isaac, who we still love today and still gives the best hugs and board games and also the opportunity to have our logo designed by one of the best artists I've ever seen. So just a big thank you to Plat Hat, Isaac, and Fernanda for providing a great game. And even though it's over, doesn't mean I can't stop playing and I can't wait to check out these two brand new decks that just came out. Yeah, I wish we'd gotten a chance to play a lot more of it. I know. It's it's such a solid game. Mm -hmm. Such a good game. And it's got so dice anyway, in it. You know how I love dice. You do. You do. All right. So what's your bone? All right. So I'm going to read two things here. And I want our right. listeners can figure out who did what. So, so this is from our play by form adventure that we're having. Oh Lord. I am fine with the battle and ready to send these demons to the abyss from which they came. But would a wiser course be to get down those steps and possibly bring the tunnel down so they can't chase us. I would stake my life. There's another exit. But if not, I am ready and I will wait for the horde to come around the corner. We'll use the wall as a shield and they stick their necks around the corner. I will cut them off. Moradin, grant me the knowledge I need to strike down my foes quickly and protect those around me. 
That's one of our characters that we're using. All right. Here's the okay, here, yeah. here, here's the here's the next one. All right. Linmar takes aim at the goblin and fires off a shot. Even if he misses, they'll know we mean business. So, listeners of ours, <laughs> you know Marty and I. Who do you think wrote the first one in the play by form? And who do you think wrote the second one? Wait, wait, do you, do you need me to look father for, for another Linmar quote? Here, I'll give you one. <laughs> yes, I'll help on the search. <laughs> so, so fans of the show. <laughs> now, Marty's laughing. I don't know why he's like, because he, maybe that was me. Maybe I was just being grumpy when I, I just, you know, yeah, I'll help on the search. Or may, maybe that was Marty. I don't know. I, we'll see and think. Oh my gosh. So y'all understand why I'm GMing now? Well, I'm the GM, but anyway, I'm, I'm having a blast in our play by forum. Uh, I cannot, um, by Flyboy Connor, Peter, I'm going to, I think that's how you pronounce it. Peter is our GM and he is doing an incredible job. We are, we are what Marty about a third through. Yeah. So, something like that. But here's my problem, Tony. <laughs> that, what the fact that you are verbose in your postings is, is or your, your keyboard doesn't work. What's your problem? Well, it's, it's not, it's not fun when two of the last three rolls I've made have been ones ones. I've rolled four ones in this campaign so far Four. That's not fun. It's not all about rolling dice. And taking names? Thanks for listening, everyone, and we would love your support. You can do so over at podpledge.com slash rdtn19. You can join our BGG Guild 1589. Follow us on Twitter at Dyson Names and Instagram Dyson Names. Okay, Marty, you got to queue up Star Blazers for me. All right, all right, here you go. We're off to outer space. We're leaving Mother Earth. To save the human race, our star blazers. Spot on. I'm telling you, I was spot on. Not even close. <laughs>Marty, I can't tell you how many times I've heard me say and friends of ours say, if I only had gotten to the drop the day before. Six. What? You've said it six times? No, I, I thought yeah, you said I couldn't guess. I did. Okay. No, well, uh, there, there's been a lot, and especially for me because I missed out on Coyumbra. I missed out on the um, one that they had where it was the, oh, the Battle of the Battleships and the Pacific War. That was on the drop at a great price. And I'm like, when it hits this price mark, I am going to pick it up. It didn't hit the price mark. It was sold out at the price mark right before it. So if there is something, you're gambling, people. You're You're gambling. If you want it, you may not want to wait just like me and go away empty handed. Then again, it does help your pocketbook a little bit. Also, Miniature Market. <laughs> what? Just laughing at you. Okay. Miniaturemarket.com is the place where you can pick up all those great games we mentioned on the show. Wacky Racers. Put that pre-order in. Battle of the Super Friends. Or Res Arcana. Arcana, is that right? Just if you say it enough different ways, one of them is right. That's right. So be sure to get over there and go to miniaturemarket.com for all those great games that they have in stock or on pre-order today. Mm -hmm.